What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. Now over on the left hand side of where that canyon is of molten gold, there is some items that were dropped previously from the other uh, the other area that was very very hot that we cooled down over time. They fell on the floor and still not managed to cool quite down enough yet. So I'm going to chuck some generators on top of them to see if that works by pulling some of that heat out. I'm not sure if it will, but it's worth a try. Over here, this is working so far. Nothing's breaking as yet. Again, the, the temperature plate's more of those to try and spread that temperature out as quickly as possible. All I've done at the minute is created a rainbow, it seems. But that left-hand side is obviously getting very, very hot, up to about two, 300 degrees. Now, these are made out of steel. So should be able to handle 250 to 300 degrees, but after that they will break. If that does happen, I'll put a door in on the far left hand side. We can actually set a door to open. Um, basically it will open when the temperature drops and then when it gets too hot the door closes and vice versa. That should work. I hope. Don't don't need to necessarily steal the power from these things but you do need to put a power line of any sort on the generators for them to continually, continuously run I'm actually clearing that whole area out over there clearing out the piping and the power cable we need to think of a way of getting all of that resource that was picked up into the base but until I've got a better structure inside the base of where I want to store everything I'm not going to bother this one is just for the liquid fireballs, which means frozen, so they could just be dropped in that pool of warm water. You would expect that they would quite quickly start to defrost and the water would cool down, but it doesn't work that way for some reason. That, that solid object there doesn't lose its temperature as quick as you would expect. These are running, as you see, they need a power cable on them in order to work. Now, they don't need the whole strip that was just the ease of doing it literally one piece of power cable of any sort will work which is what I'm doing now just cleaning up that mess so if you go onto the power cable you can click just where the plug is as soon as you click on that plug that will count it as connected and it will continue to just pump and yes it is wasting the electricity but for now we want to um, there's no point putting resources in there because I'm not going to drop it too much before I just open it up as soon as the molten gold solidifies, that's likely when I will start actually opening up this abyssal light and letting the heat transfer out. Because there's a lot of area there, you can see. There's a strange line there. You can see that line there, which is carbon dioxide. Strange patterns of how the gases are sitting. Very weird. I'm assuming over time that will fix itself. On the right hand side of that boundary you can see it's just full of carbon dioxide. I am going to put down more of the Atmo suits and make the right hand sides better and probably open it all up. So this is the quest to get the random scruffy guy with the beard and that. You have to firstly uh, knock on his door, then give him power for a specific amount of time, keeping his lights on. Uh, you have to increase the decoration or the decor level around his house and also provide him four fancy meals. Now I'm in the process of, I've already got the lights on as you can see. So I'm currently in the process of increasing the decor. Now it's pants because the heavy watt wire is negative 300. So what I actually need to do is move that out of the way and I'll do that shortly. But just to make sure we do get the decor value up, I have surrounded his house with golden statues. Wallpaper behind his house is diamond, and then the paintings above are also gold. So he's got gold statues, gold paintings, and diamond wallpaper in the hope that that will make him happy, which, it, I mean, it will. Just need to wait for them to be built, and that will increase the decor. Of course, even with all of that, the heavy watt wire going straight through his house will not work so we need to move that up and over something like that should work so literally up and over the range of it's only about three blocks anyway maybe four blocks so his house that's right smack at the center 
will not be affected by that. And you can see that there, actually, it's glowing green. Uh, we have knock on the door done, improve the decor. So that's already ticked. I want to let the stuff finish, though, just so that it looks half done. Actually, that's the opposite to what I want. I want it to look completely done, not look half done. And at the minute, it is half done. So we'll let them finish putting in all of those items that I've got set to do. Also, the heavy wire that has been diverted up and over that's not finished yet is needed because that is powering things on that far left-hand side of the base, including a couple of transformers that are then powering other buildings that, the, that we can't get to from the main power supply. These bases, this base is so big, bigger than I've ever done before because of the lab map being so large. The spine on the right-hand side, it's a bit awkward to, to use that. Maybe it could do with the spine on both sides. I'm not going to do that though, what I'm going to try and do is leave it as it is and then I'll put in transformers where I need them. Still though, on the main power grid. Finally getting a pump inside the oil well production that's going to then completely rip out all of the natural gas you see here. That will then be sent somewhere else, I'm not sure yet where, likely it will just be stored. And I'll also try and link in the geysers from at the top of the map that we had a few episodes back, actually. But I never used them because they didn't give off enough. So if we can start collecting all of this natural gas, I can use it for power, right? Oh, and the kitchen. The kitchen. There is a, a gas hob that you can do the top grade foods with. And you need natural gas to do that. So actually that is the priority, just getting the kitchen up and running with a proper cooker. The energy production from natural gas is extreme in terms of you need so much natural gas to keep the generators running. I'm not sure it's going to be viable unless we have a decent amount of geysers, a lot more than what we've got. You probably need, I think we had in the last series, we had three or four... And it was helping, but it obviously didn't keep the base running. So you likely, with this base being bigger as well, it's probably going to need five or six. And I don't even know if we've got that many on this map. We will do when we get around to actually uncovering the map. But in the meantime, I don't know what we're missing. With 60 tons plus of plastic in storage, I'm just going to go around now and get these transportation tubes to go to various different places all over the map on the left hand side only at the minute of course until we break that boundary in the center um, and the idea here is that if somebody wants to get to well the oil room which is what I'm just setting up now because they do still need to press the button to tell it to vent uh, they'll be able to use the pipe to do so and it will be a lot quicker for them getting back's not as quick because I don't have nowhere near enough of the gate things that you use to get into the transport tube but putting them around is useful so where these guys are working over here at the minute i'm going to chuck one in there there's one at the top as well i can also put one inside of the the, the yeah the natural gas vent room thing in the bob i could move them actually and just put them with the oil wells I think that should do for now. That is a lot of plastic to be delivered and a lot of construction that is required to get them done. This is getting a bit messy. So you can see it is starting to escape. There is some red getting out of that end. But also the abyssalite itself has hit its limit and now is transferring that heat through as well. That can be fixed like that, as you've just seen. Uh, this can be fixed. Hopefully that's not going to work because that's above the ladder. So I need to move that one. But we'll get them built and they'll start eating that heat as well. These are plumbed into the grid. So the power these are generating, which is quite a lot, is not going to be wasted. That is looking a bit better. Obviously the left hand ones are working but not making much of a difference. You've got to remember though that it does take time. The red is basically anything of about 70, 60 or 70 degrees and then up to infinity it seems. Um, so although it's red, it is still cool. It's definitely cooling down. If the pump, sorry, if the generator is running, then it is cooling down. 
that's all that matters. The pink gas you can see over there is phosphorus, I believe. And we are going to start getting some phosphorus gas and liquid, which in turn means we are going to get some refined phosphorus. I'm not sure yet what we're going to use that for. Obviously, phosphorus in the real world is quite a serious um, chemical for blowing things up. White phosphorus is vile. Um, but I'm not sure in game terminology what we actually use that for yet. You can see just there where the phosphorus is being built, the liquid gold has indeed set. We now have we now have a gold floor that we can dig up at any time. But I'm not going to open this up until all of the liquid gold has solidified. At that point, I'm probably going to pop the cork and just let it dissipate, try and keep my guys away from it. They're safe up to 200, 300 degrees, I believe, in their Atmos suits, though. I have put them out of iron for a change and not copper okay so it has gone horribly wrong the generators as you can see are starting to fall apart we are repairing them they run for a little bit and break down again but I am going to turn off the repair because they are wasting steel we only have just over four tons it looks like of steel in storage and I don't want to waste that keep fixing these with no end in sight so Luckily, there's this biome right next to us. You can see that is the edge of the map there. So this is the last biome we've got up until the edge of the map, which is technically the bottom for us on this map. I'm going to try and do a cooling loop that goes from this room into that biome. And we'll do two things here. We'll be cooling this area down, which is good, because that's what we want. Uh, but we'll also be warming up this cold biome, which we also want. Because cold biomes, unless you're going to use them for cooling, aren't really much used for anything. So we're going to have to get them in there. They're safe. They're in Atmos suits. It's going to take a bit of building, of course. Um, and this is the class as the right-hand side. So there's not as many Atmos suits available as yet. Over there, the right as well, you can see. We haven't dug it out yet, but that is the next stage for us. That is the zombie spore robots that you can, you can make. So you provide, I think it's 50 kilos, or it might be 500 kilos, actually, of steel. Anyway, an amount of steel and a lot of zombie spores and you basically get a robot. Now these robots can do almost most of the tasks of your duplicates but they also have no fear and are not susceptible to dying in hostile environments. So you can send them in hot, cold and space and use them for that. So we will get onto that very shortly. That was the aim I wanted to do from the very beginning. There's plenty of the zombie spore plants about but you also get zombie spore seeds free anyway in the room. There's a little locker. I think you get two. Yes, you get two anyway. So worst case scenario is you can have two zombie spores to use. You can plant them, but you have to plant them in uh, flower pots, whether it be hanging or the ground ones. You can't plant them in the farming plots. Same as always, you've seen it a thousand times by now, I'm sure. All I'm going to do is pump the negative 30 to 40 degree gases, which it looks like is carbon dioxide. That's going to go up there into that room. Then radiant pipes to disperse that heat or cold into that room. They'll, of course, take the heat will then join into that gas down the pipe. And then it will get dumped on the opposite side of the cold biome. So... It pumps up negative 30 to 40 degree gas and then in that vent over there to the left hand side will be exporting gases in the region of probably two to 300 degrees. And just that happening must mean that the room is indeed cooling down. I'm gonna block off the end as well to stop any more heat from getting in, get this room cooled down. Uh, once it's cooled down, I could probably try and fix the generators and then we can of course Try again. So with it powered up and switched on, the gases are moving. It's, yeah, there's a lot of heat in here. The, the gas is going in at negative 30 and within the first tile or two, it is already at 200, 300 degrees. So as I said, I'm gonna block this off. Uh, I would like to block it off with an insulated door. 
You can't automate the doors though, so if you hook them up to an automation, you'll find that they just lock up. That way you know that, sorry, that way you find that you have to use the like mesh doors. They are ones that open and close depending on the automation signal. Back to some more basic items though. We've, or I've been increasing the population and ignored the uh, standard things. I know the bedrooms are okay, uh, but we must be getting close, so I need to check that. But bathroom wise, we are not. The bathrooms only actually have five toilets and sinks per bathroom, and we have three. So that's 15 and 24 duplicates. So I'm gonna chuck a few more bathrooms down there are some bathrooms outside of the base as well, but that's only another six, I believe. So adding in there is another ten. Just overview, and actually you can see from here that that shine bug uh, ranch is doing really well for population. So clearly our new setup is working for the incubators. Yeah, so that door's now shut. That means that the temperature from the left-hand side to the right-hand side can't transfer over. And it, as, as such, the cooling that is in the right-hand side room is massively going to reduce. So that will work. It is working. It's going to take a while. Once it drops down another 50 degrees or so, I can get these up and running. Turning on the auto repair to allow them to be fixed should also aid in that. If I use a liquid, this process will be a lot quicker. But as you're already seeing, the gas temperature is fluctuating so much that using a liquid would instantly turn it into steam and break the pipes and everything would just go, yeah, it'd go right messy. I can't be bothered with that. So that's why I'm using the gas. It's cleaner, it's easier, but it is slower. Okay, so seeing as we're down in this area anyway, all I need to do is dig a simple passage over. We can open up all of these cupboards, inspect all of the, the machines that are in here, giving us some more data disks. And of course, data disks are quite important, as I've explained previously. They've already dug their way over here. Everything else that we don't need, I'll just dig out because they always make the rooms a bit messy. Now looking at it, I wasn't sure how to do this. First thing you need to do is click on it and activate it. You can see on the left hand side there is half a robot and there's a little animal thing looking in that test tube. It's quite simple practice that the large test tube on the left is where the robot is and that's where you put in your steel. The little guy that's hiding in the test tube full of pink liquid under that blanket is where you pump in your zombie spores. Now, I'm not sure if there's a better way of doing it, but I guess that there is only an intake for gases. So what I'm gonna try and do is just find a room, build a room with the zombie, the, the, the spore plants in, so that it fills the room with the zombie spores. And then that gas that's obviously filled with zombie spores, I will pump into the machine. That does work. I'm not sure if it's the quickest way of doing it, but it does work. So we can start clearing up in this room a little bit. On the machine itself, you can see it's flashing to say there are no zombie spores. And the little guy there in the glass test tube looks happy enough. He will grow over time the more spores you put in. And above him, you can see a progress bar that is the green bar vertically. Of course, it's showing at 50% at the minute, and at 100% you get your first bio bot. Now, you will need a doctor to do it, so when you get to 100%, the little guy in that test tube is finished with his legs and his eyeball. It then gets sucked up by the pipe above it into that other pink tube, and then that gets placed into the robot by a doctor with the maximum doctor skill. And there you have it, you have a robot, and then it just repeats again, so they'll come and get more steel, or bring more steel, and then you have to put more zombie spores in. So I am going to clean out this area around here just to make it look a bit prettier. And on the right hand side of the ladder there, I am going to build a room specifically for growing the zombie spores. The chlorine that's in that cavern above, I'm going to use that to my advantage. If I release that into the room where the zombie thing is, 
if any zombie spores escape. I'm not sure if they can cling onto the Atmos suits or not. I'm hoping not. Uh, but if they can, the chlorine will obviously wipe it out anyway, so it doesn't matter. I do have germicidal lamps installed, so I could use them as well to make sure that everybody is clean. But we are going to have to wait till the next episode to see the little guys. So the next episode will be around the bio box. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.